Getting to Know and Love Islam, a children's book introducing Islam, by the Sincere Seeker Kids Collection, narrated by Brad Grahowski. What is Islam? Islam is to obey and submit fully to our Creator, the Creator of you and I, the Creator of this whole world and everything around us. We can only live peacefully and happily in this world and the next when we submit to God by believing in Him and obeying His commands. Islam is a religion in which Muslims believe and worship the one true God, Allah, who knows everything and is all-powerful, all-loving. He loves us very much, and we should love Him, too. Islam is a complete way of life that teaches us how to live our lives, which is good and bad for us, and love and peace. Following Islam will make us better human beings. Islam teaches us that we should be good to our parents, friends, and neighbors. Islam teaches us that we should help those in need and live our life the best way we can. Allah created us so we can worship Him, and He created us to test us. If we believe in God and live a good life, we will be rewarded with paradise in the afterlife, where we will live there forever and can wish for anything we want. Who is Allah? The word Allah is the name of God. He is the one and only God. Allah never had a beginning and was never born. Allah will never have an end. He is the creator of the heavens and earth, the creator of the universe, the creator of you and I. Everything belongs to Allah. He is the king of all kings. Allah has no father, nor mother, nor son, nor daughter, nor family, nor any equal. Nothing is like Allah. Our minds cannot imagine how He looks. Allah does not get tired. He does not rest, and He does not sleep. Allah knows everything. Allah sees and hears everything. Allah is the one that provides us with many delicious foods, tasty drinks, and comfortable home. He is the one that sends us rain, shines the bright sun, and lights the beautiful big moon. He is the one that gifted us our lives, our loving parents, and our happy families. He gifted us the ability to hear, feel, taste, and see. God gifted us with our hearts, minds, souls, strengths, and skills. Allah gives and gives and gives. Allah deserves to be worshipped and obeyed. Allah is the most loving, most merciful, and most forgiving. We should turn to Allah when we are having a bad day, and we should thank Allah when we are having a good day. We should talk and make dua and prayers to Allah and ask Him for everything because He owns everything. He is always listening and can hear everything we say and ask. He knows every secret. We should turn to Allah for answers, help, and protection, too. God is the one that takes care of us, protects us, and loves us so much. When we make a mistake, we can ask Allah to forgive us. He will accept it and forgive us. Allah is above us, above the heavens, above His throne. Allah has many names. Allah has ninety-nine special names. We should try to learn and memorize them, to learn more about Him and get closer to Him. Allah should be our best friend. He knows and loves us so much. We should get to know Him and love Him back. What is the Holy Quran? Allah talks to us and tells us what we should do and what we should not do in His book, the Holy Quran. The word Quran means recitation. Allah sent down the Holy Quran with Angel Gabriel, who recited it to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who then recited it to us. The Holy Quran was revealed in the holy month of Ramadan, the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. The Holy Quran is the exact words of Allah, word by word, letter by letter. The Holy Quran has never been changed. The Holy Quran is written in the Arabic language. The Holy Quran contains God's wishes and messages to us, and we should read it every day. 
The Holy Quran is a guide on how we should live our life. The Holy Quran teaches us that we should be truthful and never lie or cheat, to give charity to the poor, and to be kind and just to our parents, neighbors, family, and friends. The Holy Quran warns us about mistreating people, animals, and plants. The Holy Quran teaches us love, compassion, faith, and goodwill. Allah reminds us of His love, compassion, and mercy throughout the Holy Quran. If we follow the Holy Quran, we will live a good life in this world and be rewarded paradise. The Holy Quran is memorized by millions of people of all ages from all over the world. It is the most read book in the world. Allah made a promise in the Holy Quran to make it easy for people to understand and memorize. The Holy Quran is meant to be read aloud and in a beautiful, melodious tone. The Holy Quran has 114 chapters called surah in Arabic, and each sentence or phrase is called an ayat. The Holy Quran is God's biggest miracle and contains hundreds of miracles inside. We should be reading the Holy Quran every day, and we should try to learn its powerful meanings and lessons. Who are messengers and prophets of God? God the Almighty chose messengers and prophets to deliver His message to us and teach us what He wants and expects from us. God has sent thousands of prophets and messengers to us throughout history. Every nation on earth has received a messenger or prophet. All the messengers and prophets of God taught the same general message, that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah, and He is the one and only, without any partners, son, daughter, or equal. All other gods are false and creations of God, not the actual Creator. Listening to Allah's messengers and prophets and obeying them would lead us to build a relationship with Allah and love Him. Muslims believe, respect, honor, and love all messengers and prophets of God, starting with Prophet Adam, including Noah, Abraham, Ishmael, Jacob, Moses, and Prophet Jesus. Peace be upon them all. All who invited people to worship God. God chose the best among us to deliver His message. The prophets and messengers were the best in morals and manners. The last and final messenger and prophet of God is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was sent to the last and final nation, our nation. Who were the past nations and what happened to them? All of God's prophets came with miracles and signs to prove God sent them. Only prophets can perform miracles. God provided Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, miracles such as the power to turn his stick into a snake and to split the Red Sea. These miracles were to humble and remind people that the power, control, and might of God is true. Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, had a miraculous birth without a father and was able to heal sick people with leprosy, cure the blind, and resurrect the dead all with the permission and will of God. The last and final prophet of God, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was provided a miracle that we can all see and hear today, the Holy Quran, which contains hundreds of miracles. The Holy Quran talks about stories of previous nations where messengers and prophets were sent down to deliver God's message. But the people rejected, disobeyed, and denied God's message. God sent Prophet Noah, peace be upon him, to his people, where he preached the message of Allah for 950 years, calling people to worship the one God and follow his commandments. But only a few people believed in him. His people denied and made fun of him. After the denial, God instructed Prophet Noah to build a ship. His people thought he was crazy for building a ship on land where there was no water nearby. Soon, water started to come out from the earth and fall from the sky. God instructed Prophet Noah to enter the ship with the ones that believed in his message. He also asked Prophet Noah to take a male and female of every animal aboard. Then, God caused a great flood, where water came out from every crack on the earth, and rain fell from the skies like never before. 
Then the flood washed out the evil people. Who is Prophet Muhammad? Before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, prophets were only sent to specific people in specific places and periods. However, Prophet Muhammad is the last and final prophet, who is meant for all humankind until the end of time. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born in Mecca, in the Arabian Peninsula. The people of Mecca were devoted idol worshippers, and the area and period at the time were full of ignorance, foolishness, and misguidance. At the age of forty, Prophet Muhammad received his first revelation in a cave from God through Angel Gabriel. He then spent the rest of his life explaining and living the teachings of the Holy Quran and Islam, the religion that God revealed to him. Even though he was known among his community as the truthful, the trustworthy, the majority of his people did not believe him or his message. Soon after, the people that believed in the message were treated badly by the people who did not believe in the message of God. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, spread the message of God in the city of Mecca for thirteen years. Then Prophet Muhammad and the believers migrated to the city of Medina, where he gained a lot more followers who made him the leader of the city. The disbelievers of Mecca planned and tried to attack Islam and the Muslims. But what was originally a small group of Muslims grew in number and they were able to survive the attack of the disbelievers. Within ten years, the Prophet led an army back to Mecca and conquered Mecca. Later, Islam spread throughout the world. Prophet Muhammad died in 632. God states in the Quran that he did not send Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, except as a mercy for us. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent to guide and lead us to Allah. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, understood the Holy Quran. He loved the Holy Quran, and he lived his life based on its teachings. He is the best role model for us. He is the one with outstanding virtues and characteristics. He was the best husband, father, grandfather, leader, teacher, judge, and statesman. He preached justice, fairness, peace, and love. Muslims try to copy and follow Prophet Muhammad's faith, behavior, attitude, patience, compassion, and righteousness. The act of copying the Prophet is called Sunnah. We try to copy the way the Prophet ate, drank, the position he slept on, and the way he behaved and interacted with others. What is a Muslim? The word Muslim means someone that is submitting to Allah's will and laws. The message of Islam has always been meant for all people. Anyone who accepts this message becomes a Muslim. One out of four persons on this earth is a Muslim. There are 1.8 billion Muslims in the world, which is about 24% of the world's population. Only 18% of Muslims are Arabs. Many Muslims live in Europe, Southeast Asia, and the West. Islam is not limited to one ethnicity or group of people. Muslims are people from a wide variety of ethnic backgrounds, races, cultures, and natural origins. In Islam, worshiping God includes every act, belief, or statement which God approves and loves. Anything that brings a person closer to Allah is an act of worship. Worshiping Allah includes the daily ritual prayers, fasting, charity, and even includes believing in the angels, God's books, and His prophets. Worshiping God also includes loving God, being thankful to Him, and placing your trust in Him. What is the purpose of our life? We cannot know the purpose of our life unless God guides us. We must ask our Creator for guidance, to show us the straight path and teach us why we were created. God guides us through His book, the Holy Quran, and prayers. Our goal is to become a believer in Him and a good servant to Him by obeying Him and being good. Those who pass this test will enter paradise forever. The purpose of our life is to find Allah, build a relationship with Him, and try our best to obey His commands, and be the best person we can be. 
life in this world is also a test for us. God is testing all of us. If we live a good life as Muslims, we pass the test. What is Hadith and Sunnah? The Holy Quran is the primary source of Islam and the literal spoken word of God. The Holy Quran is the only book in the world that contains the exact and pure word of God himself. Meanwhile, Hadith is the second source of Islam. Unlike the Quran, the statements known as Hadith were preserved by humans and not directly by God. While Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was practicing and preaching the teachings of Islam and the Holy Quran to his companions, his companions would report and record the statements, actions, and beliefs of the Prophet. The companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gathered them, and later scholars who specialized in Hadith collected these reports, and they were called Hadith. Hadith refers to a narration or report that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, did, or approved. Hadith can also refer to the Prophet's reactions or silence in response to something said or done by others. The acts and practices of the Prophet are called Sunnah. Prophet Muhammad stands as the sacred model for us to copy and follow, as God sent him to us as an example of how we should live our life. What are the Six Articles of Faith? To become a Muslim, each follower must believe in six articles of faith, which translates to the word Iman in Arabic. These six articles of faith form the foundation of the Islamic belief system. The six articles of faith are Belief in the Oneness of Allah Belief in the Angels of Allah Belief in the Prophets and Messengers of Allah Belief in the Books of Allah Belief in the Last Day and Resurrection Day and Judgment Day Belief in Divine Predestination Oneness of God The first and most important article of faith in Islam is the belief in the oneness of God. Faith begins with the belief in Allah, the Glorious, from which all other facets of faith spring. A Muslim believes and acknowledges that no one is worthy of his or her worship, love, loyalty, sacrifice, hope, and fear, other than Allah, our Creator. God does not like it when people worship any other gods besides Him, because all other gods are false. God is the only one to whom worship is due. What are the five pillars of Islam? The religion of Islam is based upon five primary foundations, or pillars. These five pillars, or religious duties, are required and every Muslim needs to follow and practice them to the best of their ability. The five pillars are mentioned individually throughout the Holy Quran and through narrations of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which are known as Hadith. The five pillars of Islam are Testimony of faith in the oneness of God, Allah, and the last and final Prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Establishment of the five mandatory prayers Concern and almsgiving to the needy, zakat in Arabic. Fasting during the month of Ramadan, for self-purification. The pilgrimage to Mecca, at least once in a lifetime, for those who can perform it and can afford it. Muslims take these five pillars very seriously, and prioritize them over other things in life. What is Jannah, Paradise? Jannah is often translated to mean green garden. Jannah, or paradise, is located in the seventh heaven. All Muslims must believe in Jannah, paradise. Jannah is the beautiful, relaxing, peaceful, fun place in which Muslims who believe in God and live a good life will live forever. Whatever someone wishes for in Jannah, they will get. The people of Jannah will only see good things and listen to beautiful sounds. The people of Jannah will be with other good people and reunite with their righteous family members. There is no sadness, pain, worries, boredom, anger, hate, jealousy, sickness, or fear in Jannah. Jannah is so big and beautiful that our minds cannot even imagine how it is. Paradise has seven levels, 
and each level has many stages, levels, and categories. Each level up in paradise has greater joys and pleasures and is more amazing than the level under it. Paradise has eight gates. The highest level of paradise is called Janat el Firdos. Paradise will have many mansions made of gold on top of silver. There will be rooms upon rooms inside these palaces with waterfalls falling beneath them. The soil of Jana is made of pure white musk, and the pebbles are made of pearls, rubies, diamonds, and jewels. The people of Jana will lean back in their luxurious high soft couches and beds with cup holders and comfortable blankets. The dwellers of paradise will eat and drink whatever they wish. If one sees a bird he wishes to eat, it would fall roasted between his hands. Cups will be served to them made of shiny rubies, pearls, and diamonds. Fruits will hang freely from trees and automatically lowered for them to enjoy. The clothes of Jana will never wear out or age. Nothing will be more beloved and enjoyable than the best gift in paradise, which is seeing the face of Allah, the Glorious. This will be the most precious gift to the people that lived a good life. We should try our best to live good lives so we can enter paradise with our families and live happily ever after. The End